Hey guys, I'm excited to share this episode with you from Dr. Kristen Bayer. Kristen is a board certified family medicine physician who found the ketogenic diet in her own healing and health journey and is now working to educate the public on it. And listen to what she has to say here. She says, as a board certified family medicine physician, I've become frustrated over the reactive nature of modern medicine and believe more emphasis needs to be placed on preventative aspects. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. Since medical school failed to provide dietary or nutritional training. Okay. Think about that real quick. Medical school failed to provide dietary or nutritional training. I'm going to stop right there because I think so often we get mad. (laughs) We get mad at our doctors for not telling us how to fix things on the front end. And we need to remember that that's not what they're trained in. They're trained in medicine on the, on the tail end. So they just, they don't have that education. Um, So she says, since medical school failed to provide that education, she started researching. I started researching on my own and was amazed with what I discovered. Turns out weight control is much more complex than the often preached calories in versus calories out paradigm. I had tried every diet imaginable, including veganism for three years to control my weight, migraines, and autoimmune disease. Eventually they all failed until keto. Eating a low carb, moderate protein, high fat diet allowed me to take control of my health, wean off medications and regain energy. My passion and commitment to nutrition have led to preparation for another board exam to specialize in obesity medicine. Awesome. Certification should be obtained by early 2020, helping others prevent or improve disease through diet and lifestyle is my calling. I hope you guys really enjoy this episode with Dr. Bayer. She is so sweet and so sincere. Her heart is in the right place. So please give it up for Dr. Kristen Bayer. Hey, Kristen, how are you doing? I am good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm so excited for you to share your story and your passion and what you're doing in the ketogenic space. Uh, I was so happy to find you randomly. I found you on on Instagram. Right. And yes. you sent me a quick message saying that you had a personal story with keto and that now you're um, kind of basically on a mission to help people understand the healing power of the ketogenic diet. And I was like, okay, yes, yes, you better be on the podcast and tell your story. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, tell us about that. Right. So, I mean, kind of going back, you know, I guess all the way to, to high school, I was always, you know, very active, played sports and well, I was never really petite, you know, I was, I maintained a healthy weight and then like many people during college, my eating habits. <laughs> kind of went by the yeah. wayside and <laughs> included a lot of late night pizza and alcohol <laughs> and fast yeah. food. And, you know, the, the pounds just slowly kind of crept on. And uh, in an effort to avoid all the weight gain, I started working out a lot more. And, you know, I was doing uh-huh. cardio twice a day and uh-huh. definitely overdoing it and um, no weight training at that point. And, uh-huh. you know, I just gained weight. And then I'd, you know, go on a diet for a few months and only eat fruit and salad and probably little to no protein, lose weight for a bit, then gain it all back. And, um, Mm -hmm. you know, this just continued for a while. And I think it was probably my earlier mid twenties. Um, you know, I was sleeping horribly. I was out way too late on the weekends and then getting up at 4 a.m. during the week before work and working out, then working out again after work. And Mm -hmm. I mean, my skin was horrible. I had mood swings all the time. It was Mm. just a mess. Mm. I finally, um, you know, saw a doctor and was told uh, my acne was from PCOS. And Mm. I think that was kind of like the first wake up call there and he wanted me to uh, start metformin and you know at this time i had no idea what insulin resistance was or Mm -hmm. um you know the connection there but you know kind of started reading about it and that kind of motivated me to explore dietary options and things but it was never really uh, full full force with it um Then, you know, I didn't actually go to medical school till I was in my um, mid 20s, kind of I was in medical device sales and then decided that wasn't going to work for me. So went to medical school and it was during medical school, I started having all these vague symptoms. I was tired all the time. I had muscle aches. I had what was diagnosed as rosacea, but never seemed to improve despite all the medications I was on. And I developed mm-hmm. Raynaud's, which is like color changes in, in your toes and fingers in response to cold. And suddenly I was just so tired, I could barely make it through the day. And then um, one day in class, I kind of had that 
aha moment when we were uh, discussing and learning about autoimmune disease. Mm. And it was like, oh, no, I think my symptoms align pretty well here. But maybe I'm just like a hypochondriac, paranoid mm -hmm. medical student who thinks, mm -hmm. you know, they have everything that they're learning about. But mm -hmm. eventually I, um, you know, went to my doctor and was told my um, ANA test, the anti-nuclear antibody test that screens for autoimmune disease was positive. And uh, turns out I had uh, double-stranded DNA and RNP, which is ribonucleoprotein uh, antibodies, which both are seen in lupus and mixed connective tissue disease. So, oh. yeah, it was kind of a, an eye-opener there. And I was started oh. on um, a couple medications. Uh, one was prednisone, which if anyone has been on prednisone, they know how horrible it is. Uh, weight gain is the biggest side effect and just makes people very anxious and insomniacs. And uh, I was not okay with that. So I kind of started reading on my own about alternative treatments. And I came across this book um, by some, some lady who had autoimmune disease and lupus, and she swore by a vegan diet. And I thought, okay, you know, I can do this. If it means avoiding prednisone, I'll, I'll become a vegan. <laughs> and uh -huh. um, yeah, so I, I gave that a try and that try lasted about three to four years. Oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. And um, oh, it was horrible. I was so irritable all the time. I had lower energy. I was anxious. And um, at some point in there, I started to develop horrible migraines which I had never had before. So after, I don't know, three to four years, I, was, I couldn't do it anymore. I felt horrible. So I slowly started to add meat back into my diet and didn't really notice any changes in my autoimmune symptoms. But overall, I started feeling better pretty quickly. Um, then I came across Rob Wolf's book, uh, The Paleo Solution and oh. the Autoimmune Paleo Diet. I thought, oh, we'll give this a try now. And I when I stuck to it, I did really well. My symptoms were better, but, you know, avoiding nuts and seeds and dairy and grains and nightshade vegetables, I would be good for a few weeks and then slip up. Um, yeah. So it kind of, it was a, to the point where I was kind of giving up on these dietary interventions. Mm. Um, but my migraines were just getting so bad. I was on three medications, uh, still taking a ton of Excedrin and, and taking so much, et cetera, and I developed an ulcer. So at that point, I was like, okay, let's let's see if I can find something else. There has to be dietary triggers going on. And I came across this book called The Migraine Miracle by uh, Dr. Josh Turknet. And he is a neurologist who also suffered with migraines. And he described a ketogenic anti-inflammatory diet along with you know the importance of stress management and sleep for mm, the prevention awesome. of migraines. Yeah. I thought, this is crazy. I've never heard of the ketogenic diet, never in medical school or residency <laughs> did this ever come across. And um, I just started researching it on my own. Um, I read uh, Jimmy Moore's Keto Clarity, did a a lot of searches on PubMed and any other book I could find. Uh -huh. uh, you know, finally, after I realized it wasn't going to give me a heart attack and wasn't going to kill me, <laughs> I was like, okay, let's let's give this a try here. Why not? So I went full in and within two weeks, my migraines were almost completely gone. Wow. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe it. And my neurologist was like, yeah, I don't know. This might be a fluke. Why don't you stay on your, your medications for a little bit? I was like, okay. And eventually I just took myself off of them, you know, weaned uh -huh. them slowly and, and everything. And my migraines didn't come back and I couldn't believe it. Um, but the kind of unexpected side effect of that is all of my autoimmune symptoms from lupus also improved. My muscle aches resolved, my joint pain, the fatigue, um, the malar rash, all my skin issues, everything just exponentially got so much better <laughs> with keto. Wow. And, um, yeah, it was yeah, crazy. All that inflammation was just like <laughs> white. Exactly. That's... Yeah. I mean, it really was. And then, you know, I started, 
you know, kind of not getting upset, but I was more baffled. Like, how did I make it through all this training? Yeah, I've seen so many doctors for numerous conditions and not once did anyone mention diet or keto or anything like that. I mean, even relating back to PCOS, which right. resolved as well. Um, <sighs> so, and I, you know, just continued to try to educate myself and read as much as I could um, and kind of adding that into to my practice uh, in primary care back when I was in residency, I um, had so many patients that were struggling with obesity and diabetes. And I can't, I, I had one patient, I think in three years, I had one patient who had successfully lost weight and weaned off of his diabetic medications. And hundreds of people attempted to, and I just, you know, had this helpless feeling that I want these patients to get their weight under control and their diabetes under control. But I just was not successful um, telling them to, you know, work out more and eat less. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. that <laughs> calories in, calories out theory just was failing every time. Right. Yeah. When blood sugar is fighting you, that's a beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then when you put a patient on insulin, uh -huh. um, it's just, it's almost like game over. It's so much harder when you're injecting right. them with insulin. And I believe the patients, I believe they're doing everything that I tell them to do. And um, once you start them on insulin, the weight creeps up, they need more and more. It's just a, a snowball effect. So right. I decided like, this is ridiculous. I've had so much success on keto. Everything I'm reading about it for obesity and diabetes is just unbelievable, better than medications that we have out there. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, I have my board certification in family medicine, but now I'm going back and I'm going to get a second board certification in obesity medicine and plan uh -huh. to incorporate keto to help all these awesome. people who are struggling. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so awesome. Yeah. That's why, I mean, you really spoke to my heart there. And uh, my mom had, was diagnosed with type two diabetes. Um, sorry, just a little side note, just to yeah. tell you where I'm coming from. So she was got it. And, you know, when I was in high school and she was an athlete growing up, I mean, she was very right. healthy. She was, went to the Olympic trials for track. I mean, very, very oh, healthy man. and fit. And then yeah. followed the standard American diet. I remember her having guilt about eating skin on chicken or fat on her steak because, oh, right. I know this is so bad, but I just like it so much, but I shouldn't eat it, you know? And, yeah. um, <laughs> living that low carb, high sugar life. She got type two diabetes and then oh. she went keto a couple of years ago. And I mean, obviously, as you know, I, you already know what happened. <laughs> she's yeah, off yeah. All her medication. She's a healthy body weight again. Her brain energy is back up. Her energy levels are yeah. back up. And, you know, I get to do this with clients as I'm sure you're doing it with your patients. And it's just, it's so impacting. It does definitely, um, put in you this sense of, we have to get this out on a big level. Like people need to yeah. know their options. It's horrible that they actually don't know that this is an option. <laughs> so I right. super admire what you're right. doing. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. You know, and I think uh, like with your mom, it's getting people over their fear of fat. Mm -hmm. Um And I think that's one of the biggest challenges. And you tell someone, you know, we're going to make 70% of your diet fat and just having them get over that mental barrier is one right. of the toughest steps. And make sure you salt your um, food too. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh We're my gosh. I know. <laughs> it's, it's like I have to break patients into these conversations slowly because yes. if I say all this at once, it, they're going to think I'm crazy. Yeah, um, and it's, it's but, overwhelming almost because it's just the polar opposite of what they've always been taught. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, even with with my own parents who are super healthy and fit and have always been active, um, you know, kind of going through their pantry and cleaning out <laughs> some of the junk, it's like, you know, I still can't convince them to add healthy fat into their diet. And yeah. it's, I, I don't even know what to do anymore <laughs> about that. Yeah. But we usually have more success with, with patients. Yeah. Someone else will be their messenger. That's usually the case with family. <laughs> yeah. I think it's going to have to be there. Let's so, but you know, Let's dive oh, into I'm sorry. Let's let's dive into this obesity and diabetes thing a little more because I know that's your passion and um I love what you're saying about having to first shift mindsets 
and people, um, I do a, I have a presentation on keto and I spend quite a bit of time in the beginning of it, just showing, uh, what, what we've been trained to, I, you know, I start my presentation with a low fat ego, um, commercial from the nineties uh-huh. and it's, oh, I don't yeah. know if you remember this commercial, but it's like, you need the low fat more than I do. And it's like an insult because they're insinuating yeah. that low fat will make that person skinnier. So they're saying they're fat or whatever, but like, yeah. uh, you know, this is what we grew up with. And now, um, if you want, I'm sure you've seen these, um, graphs, but if you watch like from the time that, um, Ansel Keys, who was instrumental, I don't know if you've come across him, but mm-hmm. he was the one who oh, kind yes. of spread the, okay, good. Yeah. Spread the, the country study and, yeah, and the whole, exactly. uh, yeah, yeah. So fear from of that, that started with him. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then you watch the, the rise of obesity and diabetes. It just spikes from that time that we were all taught, Hey, uh, low fat's going to give you a heart attack. And then the food guide pyramid came out. And so it's really cool. I think that we're, we right now as professionals get to live in this time of a huge shift, right? It's shifting, you know, yeah. time magazine had Ansel keys on the front back in his day saying, you know, low fat diets will cure heart yep. disease. And now time magazine is saying, uh, eat butter why we were wrong. Right. And yes. um, it's exciting yes. to be part of that shift. Um, it, it is. Yeah. So like, what has been your experience? Um, have you, have you worked with clients like on, I, it sounds like you're working with them on a ketogenic diet already that have diabetes and obesity. So I don't do a whole lot of it right now. I kind of, um, I'm doing a little more urgent care, but I want okay. to definitely go back. Um, my whole focus, hopefully I'll, I'll take the obesity medicine boards in February, okay. um, of next year. And then I, that's all I want to do. Um, you know, when I have time and patients are interested, I definitely, um, try to educate them as much as possible yeah. about keto and point them to some good resources. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, I'll have patients come back and, and tell me, you know, about their success, which is just fantastic. Even without, you know, regular appointments, a lot of um, doctors, when they're coaching someone for weight loss, you bring them back every couple weeks or every month at first. Now I'll go a couple months without seeing a patient, you know, without checking in and they're down 30 pounds or, wow. you know, something yeah. around that or weaning off of their medication. And I was like, I have to do, like, I have to do this full time. I can't, yeah. I can't not yeah. um, be more active in, in this, uh, you know, new age that we're coming into with uh, low carb and ketogenic diets. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love, I love this shift. Um, I, I'll tell you a story. I, and I, I kind of want to pick your brain on, your sure. thoughts on how we can kind of shift the the doctors and the medical community, like what you think needs to happen in order for that to happen. Because I understand that they're not nutritionists, you know, doctors are not, that's not like the main focus of what they do professionally. So, you know, I think sometimes doctors get a bad rap because it's like, Oh, how come they're not telling people this? And it's like, well, they, that's just not what they were trained. That's not what doctors are trained for right. really. Right. And that's just a system a problem in the system, right? And Western yes. medicine that we're realizing is really, really broken and needs to be shifted. Um, and I'll tell you a story real quick. My mom being um, on a ketogenic diet to manage her type two diabetes, she actually fell and broke um, mm. her femur and she was in the hospital for quite a while recovering mm. from that. And um, she told them I'm on a ketogenic diet. I have type two diabetes. And, um, she, you know, I'm checking it. She lives out of state and I'm calling her and checking in on her. And one day she said, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm a little concerned. I'm, I'm getting really thin. Um, it's kind (laughs) of, she's one of those, like, doesn't want to trouble anybody types, you know, and she was just like, they're not really giving me much that I can really eat. I just kind of pick off what I can. But, and I realized, I was like, oh man, as I'm listening to her, I realized, you know, she's just like picking at her plate because they're not supporting her diet at all there in the hospital. And she, you know, was like, she's like, I kind of feel like I'm skin and bones and she was skinny already, you know? So I was like, okay. So, Uh um, um, yeah, so I actually like asked her, I had sent her a copy of the ketogenic Bible. Um, oh, and I, yeah. 
I had asked uh, if she could ask a neighbor if they could bring it in to the hospital um, and they and give it to her nurse or doctor. And they did. And this was such a sweet, like I cried <laughs> because nurses are just the best. Um, but this yeah. sweet nurse took that book and read it. And the next day brought her like a bacon omelet with avocado. And, <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, bless her oh, heart. Oh, that's great. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and so, yeah. So, but I think that just shows like not, not an unwillingness in the medical community to know about these things, but just like a system wide problem where it's not being taught. And I was just curious, like if you were, you're in that system. So I wonder like, what do you feel like needs to change? Like, how can this be shifted? Well, um, first, I think you're being very generous, giving a lot of doctors the benefit of the doubt, saying they just don't know. Because, I mean, yeah, that is that is true for a lot. And some do have an open mind. But I'll tell you, there are a lot who don't want to hear anything about it, who um, are very set in their ways. And, you know, in, in their defense, um, you kind of get uh, trapped into the specialty that you're practicing, right? So there's a lot of um, specialists or even primary doctors who really don't read about um, dietary interventions for diabetes or obesity or, you know, even now, like we're experimenting more with um, ketones for treatment of Alzheimer's and neurological diseases and everything. And, um, you know, doctors have a hard time just staying current in their own field. So, um, it, it is kind of a time issue, but I think there are some who are much more open minded and I think they have to be targeted first <laughs> for um, yeah. these interventions. And the more popular they become and the more research we can show these good randomized control trials and everything, um, I think that's going to be the key. And it's it's going to take years. It right. is. And you're yeah. always going to have people who, you know, don't want to put the time into actually reading it. Um but I do think it's it's turning and patients are asking about it now. And it's going to kind of force doctors to have to at least acknowledge it and read a little bit about it so they know how to appropriately respond. But yeah. um, I also think that's um, a great, you know, thing about the fitness industry. I feel like the ketogenic diet really kind of started booming with the mm-hmm. fitness industry. Mm-hmm. And people are seeing all these great changes in their body composition and strength right. and everything. Um, and then, you know, it kind of trickles from there. So I think the fitness industry really kind of brought the ketogenic diet back to life here. Um, you know, it does have a history back to the, like the 1920s of being used for uh, epilepsy treatment. But then when medications came out, the diet kind of fell by the wayside and pharmaceuticals became mainstream. But I really think the fitness industry brought it to life again. And now doctors have to kind of get on board and see what's going on. Yeah, I was kind of, okay, two things. One, I was, I always say like, I'm so glad that uh, keto tends to make people lose weight because that's why they'll do it. <laughs> yep, <laughs> but they have yep. no idea all these amazing adaptations that are having happening in their body for like BDNF and their brain and building more mitochondria and becoming more exactly. sensitive to insulin and just these amazing adaptations that they get to keep with them. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm like, yay, I'm so glad. You know, people are like, oh, that's a fad diet. I'm like, yes, I'm so glad it's a fad diet because they have no <laughs> idea how much good they're doing for themselves just by following a fad diet and how much it's research true. is actually behind it. Behind it, there's actually quite a bit. Um, Absolutely. And, and on that note, like there's even more. And, you know, one thing, I'll just side note, I guess, for you, um, like the owners of Keto Mojo, they started a foundation called um, the Ketogenic Foundation, I believe is what they called it. And they're asking okay. all, all the ketogenic companies, because, you know, there's so many now, right? Because it's popular. So there's like yeah. all these ketogenic support companies. Um, and he's asking them all to donate 1% to science. So to donate 1% of their profits to the foundation so that we can do more research and have more. Um, and that oh, I think will be yeah, then fuel the medical system. Cause I know the medic, you know, doctors, they want to see, they want to see studies. They want to see evidence um, yeah. and science. So it's pretty cool. It's like, it's, it's happening and you're absolutely right. It's going to take years and years, but it's, it's so empowering to know, um, to see this shift, I think happening from let's fix, let's put band-aids on problems and instead like, well, let's just not have the problem happen at all. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, there just isn't a lot of money in preventive medicine. Right. Um, it, doctors are reimbursed more for doing procedures. And um, when you sit and talk to someone for an hour about their diet, the reimbursement just isn't there. So I think 
you know, for some people, there just isn't a whole lot of motivation. You have to have that passion for it, um, which I think, you know, the more doctors out there who have their own personal experiences with keto are going to notice that. Um, And just like you said, it's, it's beyond weight loss. I mean, I think the mental clarity, the focus, the energy, I mean, all of that, if you do keto for weight loss, great. You'll stick with it for the other benefits. Exactly. Yeah. That's, it's such a metabolic tool and the tool belt. And really honestly, I mean, on the fitness industry thing of end of things, like, you know, if you, if you work with a, an educated high level health coach, like they've been using ketogenic diet as a tool for a long time, like way before it became Mm -hmm. popular, that was a, you know, a tool that they would use in certain certain scenarios to help regulate insulin and help people become more sensitive to using glucose in their body. So it's cool to see now that like, um, it's just exploded with popularity and it's doing so much good in the world. Right. Um, it, it I, is. I wanted to ask you too. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> um, so in your, in your experience with your neurologist, like, mm-hmm. did he, did he or she ever come back to say like, Hey, uh, you know, like, that's actually pretty cool. What happened? Or was there just not follow up there? I'm kind of curious. Cause I know sometimes like right. patients will inspire the physician to then say, okay, hold on, let me take a look at this. Cause that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, and I, I had a great neurologist, nothing, nothing against yeah, yeah. him. He would, he, I don't think he really fully embraced it, but he was not opposed to me having success on it by any means. And uh-huh. he knows I'm off of my medications and doing well. And I think the longer I go, um, the the more confident he is that it could be used for some some people. Um, and, you know, there's so many different mechanisms uh, behind migraines. We don't really know the exact cause. It's probably very complex. Mm. And um, I think if we can really narrow down the cause of migraines and why the ketogenic diet or ketone bodies themselves, the beta hydroxybutyrate are therapeutic. I think that'll convince a lot more neurologists. Um, You know, we have a few good studies with proposed uh, mechanisms of benefit and about there being a cerebral like energy deficiency um, in the brain for migraine patients and inflammation and everything and how, um, you know, ketones can provide that alternative fuel source. But if we can really pin that down and have a good trial, I think more neurologists will get on board. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope my mom doesn't mind me sharing this. Um, but like (laughs) I, you know, when she was just transitioning into ketosis, so hadn't been in very long, she ended up getting a little bit, um, disoriented and kind of lost on a long drive that Mm -hmm. she was taking. And, um, the, she was like at a gas station and they ended up, you know, calling the ambulance and she was taking to the hospital cause she was just like kind of disoriented, didn't know where to go. And, um, you know, they say like Alzheimer's and dementia are like type three diabetes, right. The inflammation yep. of the brain for so yep. long. And, um, that was a little scary. And then now she has been, and the doctor said like, I'm not really sure what happened there, but it, it could be like pre-dementia. We're not sure. And, you know, now that she's been keto for a few years, like I have just watched, I'm like, I don't really need a test. I don't really need anybody to give me a diagnosis. Like I've just seen her brain energy, like come right back. Like she's just her old self and sounds totally normal and doesn't get disoriented or lost. Like she has tons of energy. And so I think like for the, the brain health alone, being able to, you know, the way I look at it is like, okay, carbohydrates slightly inflame your brain. That's like not for, and more so for some people than others, it's not necessarily a bad thing. But then if we can go into this natural state of ketosis, sometimes like we were always meant to be because we would run out of food and our bodies would just drift into ketosis, then we could offset that inflammation naturally. And so it's so cool to, to know how to do that now and still be able to eat food and not have to starve. (laughs) Yeah, no, it really is. And and that's great. You've seen changes in your mom. Um, and I think that's really a big wave of research right now for, um, the keto diet is, Alzheimer's. And again, it's, you know, similar to, to one of the proposed mechanisms for migraines is there's just this energy deficiency in the brain. And if it's from insulin resistance, glucose impairment, it can't be transported into the cells for whatever reason, the brain cells are not getting the energy they need. And if we can get patients into ketosis and provide ketones for fuel for the brain, I think that that can be a really powerful uh, intervention. And, you know, 
caveat, like it's not going to work for everyone with dementia. Right. There's different types of right. dementia, but, um, you know, it can, it can make a big difference for, for a lot of people. And um, then, you know, you can even get into the world of exogenous ketones. And, you know, if you can't change someone's diet when they're 80 and, and showing signs of cognitive impairment, maybe we can supplement them with ketones right. Right. Um, daily. And, and there's a lot of promise there, too. So a lot of exciting research going on with yeah. not just the ketogenic diet, but um, the ketone bodies themselves, the beta hydroxybutyrate uh, specifically. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So for anybody who listens that they're like, okay, maybe I'm obese or maybe I have type two diabetes or maybe I have PCOS or migraines or something you mentioned here, autoimmunity, like where, mm -hmm. where, where would you suggest that they start? Like, um, you know, like getting educated first, doing a lot of research, uh, just jump right in. Like, do you feel like um, it's like a yeah. go for it all the way, baby yourself into it. Like how, what do you, what do you recommend? Right. So I, I think it, there's a lot of um, discussion that needs to happen first to kind of assess exactly where the patient is and where they're um, at with their current diet. Um, you know, some people do well jumping right in. And, uh, you know, I think with diabetics especially, that's something that needs to be monitored very closely by uh, their physician because they're going to be taken off of their diabetic right. medications pretty rapidly. Right. Um, for other other people, I actually think paleo is a good transition into uh -huh. keto. Yeah. If we can focus first on getting rid of the processed foods, the grains, yeah. the sugars, the vegetable oils, uh -huh. if they think people are going to feel better uh, pretty quickly. But then once they kind of transition out of that, maybe do that for two weeks to a month, then we can start talking about the macronutrients and the composition of their diet in terms of how much fat, how much protein, how many carbs they should get. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think sometimes putting people that, you know, are severely insulin resistant or diabetic um, that have over 100 pounds to lose. If you do too much at once, it becomes very overwhelming. They feel horrible during that transition stage. And a lot of them give up before they become uh, fat adapted, you know, after like a month or two. So I I, I think it really depends on the patient. Um, yeah. But I do definitely encourage all of them to read on their own. Um, there's so many good sources out there now to um, free, free sources like Diet Doctors, website. Um, there's programs uh, you can pay for, listen to podcasts and books. I mean, you can really find a lot of information. And I think that helps. So I think the more you can educate the patient, the more empowered they feel. And um, yes. I think that's a, that's a helpful tool. Absolutely. I love that. And I loved in the beginning, you said like, oh, I, I point patients to write resources. And I think that's so important because um, if you just tell everybody everything, it's not the same as them being able to come upon conclusions themselves and let it let that let it hit them in their heart where they need it to hit so that it can become something they want and not just something they're being told to do. So I love yes. I love that you do that. And um, I 100 percent agree that like it is a lot easier to transition into ketosis once you're already eating a clean diet. And even for people who aren't super obese too, right? Like if you're just, you know, normal yeah, person and you've been true. running off pizza and Coke and fries or whatever, and then you switch, yeah. it can be very, it can be very overwhelming. So I love that. I love that approach too. just clean things up and then, and then go through a phase of keto, see how you feel. Right. And that, like, that's my big thing is I don't, I'm like, you don't have to commit to it forever. I mean, unless we're using it for a therapeutic tool like diabetes. Um, right. And, like just right. see, just try, just see how you feel, see how it works for you, you know? And it, for you, it was like mad, you know, I'm hearing your story, like PCOS, migraines, autoimmunity. It's like keto candidate, yeah. keto candidate, keto candidate, you know? Yes, right? <laughs> so for you, obviously, it took me, it's like, huge. Yeah. It took me over 10 years to find it. And, you know, hopefully we can Aww. save other people yeah. from that long struggle. But I mean, you know, I, I, and I think, um, you know, the same diet doesn't work for everyone, right? Like, I think metabolic flexibility is very important if if you're not using uh, keto for, for therapeutic reasons. Um, and I think nutritional needs are going to change over time, too. What works for you when you're 25 or 30 is not going to be the same diet that works as well for you when you're 50. Sure. Um, and I, I think, you know, giving it a fair shot 
being fat adapted, giving it a few months, and then if you want to go back and increase your carbs, okay. If if you don't have carb intolerance, that's great. I mean, right. it's, one thing is not going to work for everyone. Right. And kind of um, the the other thing I like to, to point out to people too is. You know, there's different versions of keto, right? The quote, dirty keto, um, mm -hmm. and then a, a clean keto. And I, when I started um, experimenting myself, I definitely did more of a dirty keto. I was not eating high quality meat. I would do a lot of those keto snacks and desserts and almond flours. And while I still was in ketosis, it wasn't until I really cleaned it up and got rid of the almond flour and really cut back on dairy and, and all the snacks that I really felt the full benefit of it. Uh -huh. um, so, you know, it's, it's trial and error for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Oh, I love that last point for sure. Um, okay. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for coming on and good luck with your boards yeah, coming up. I oh, love thank that. Thank you so much. And yeah, no, thank you. Where can people find you? Sure. So right now I'm primarily on Instagram at uh, Doctoring Keto. And hopefully soon this summer, I will have my website um, up and running for, you know, the latest news and everything on keto, which will also be uh, DoctoringKeto.com. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Inside Out Health Podcast. I hope this episode served as inspiration and something that you needed to hear in your life. If you have a friend or family member that you think would benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And also please subscribe. I have so many more amazing guests coming. I have just been so gifted and honored to meet so many incredible health professionals in my career, and I cannot wait to share their messages with you guys. So please subscribe. And if you could be so kind as to rate my show, I would really appreciate it. Um, this podcast is honestly an intuitive call to me to help spread goodness to the world. And so if you guys can help me do that, I would really appreciate it. Um, if you want more info on this guest, pop over to my website, check out my podcast section, and you can get links to everything we talked about in the show um, and find out more about this guest and what where you can go from here. Um, make sure you're also following me on Instagram. Uh, that is my most active platform. You can find me at Coach Tara Garrison. You can also find me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter. Everything is Coach Tara Garrison across the board. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to send me a message, guys, and let me know other guests or other topics you want to hear on the show, please let me know. I am here to serve you. So um, would love to hear from you. Would love your feedback on the show. And if you share any of these episodes, please tag me on social media. It's Coach Tara Garrison.